All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be looking at a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be a little bit different than what we previously did. Now what we're going to have to apply is the division algorithm for long division to divide this. Because we simply, even though yes, this term, all these are being divided, they're now not being divided by a monomial. Now they're being divided by a binomial. And when we're dividing by a binomial or anything larger, a polynomial, we need to use the division algorithm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up like long division, <coughs> which we just practiced. So I'm going to write this as z, let's go a little bit further down, z minus 1 divided by z to the fourth minus 3z cubed plus 2z squared <coughs> minus 4z plus 4. All right. So all we're simply writing is now we're just writing the problem in our long division format. So now what we need to do is apply the long division algorithm. Now, please pay attention to how I simplify this. When using the long division algorithm, all we're going to use to divide out of this divisor is just our leading term, which will be z. So make sure you're polynomial that your divisor is going to be in descending order, meaning you're going to have the leading term is going to be the is going to be your term with the highest largest degree, which we've talked about, right? Have to have the largest degree first, then you're going to be your leading term. So what we're simply going to do is take your leading term and use that as your divisor into your dividend. Z divides into z cubed, z to the fourth z cubed times, right? Yes. Now, once you have um, once you have your answer, all right, you're going to multiply that by your quotient. You're going to multiply your quotient by both of your divisors. So you only use the leading term to divide into the first term, and then once you know it, you multiply it back times both terms. So let's look at it. z cubed times z is going to give you z to the fourth. z cubed times negative 1 gives you negative z cubed. Does everybody follow what I just did? So I'll go back through it again. You use the leading term. Scantron on the computer, please. You use the leading term to divide into z to the fourth. z goes into z to the fourth how many times? One. Z cubed. So therefore, Alex, Alex, I don't think you need to talk to the decimal right now. So therefore, z cubed. Now, z cubed times z is z to the fourth. And then you do z cubed times negative 1 is negative z cubed. <coughs> now, let's just go back through the second step. So by using the division algorithm, once you have your second row, you subtract. But make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you subtract the whole row. So what I like to do is I like to put the whole row in parentheses. So I do not forget my subtraction signs because this is the majority of mis this is the where most students make their mistakes. Z to the fourth minus z to the fourth is what? Yes. What was it? Justin? Did you not have it? Oh, okay, because you're not writing. Okay. Z to the fourth minus z to the fourth is zero. Z to the fourth, which is just zero, right? Negative 3z cubed minus a negative th z cubed. Well, that's now going to turn to a double negative, right? So now you're just going to have negative 2z cubed. Now let's go to the next row. Does z, remember we only take the first term, yes? It does. So therefore now that's a positive z cubed. So three negative 3z three cubed plus a positive z cubed is a negative 2z cubed. Right? 
It's like this. It's negative 3 minus negative 1. Negative 2. Right? So that's your coefficient, negative 2. Your z cubed is just your, still your term. So that state remains z cubed. But so it ends up being negative 2. Cool? All right. So now let's move to the next row. Z divides into negative 2z cubed how many times? Well, it's going to divide in there a negative 2 times. And then z divides into neg z cubed. Z. Anyone? Not to the negative oh. second, just oh. z squared. Oh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll show you a little trick here at the end. So now we need to make sure we multiply this term times every single one of these terms. So negative z squared, negative 2z squared times z is going to provide you with a negative 2z cubed. Then negative 2z squared times negative 1 is now a positive 2z squared. OK? So we subtract our rows. Negative 2z cubed, subtract negative 2z cubed, double negative, turns it to 0z cubed, which is just 0. Now, what do I subtract the 2z squared from? Well, I can bring down this term, which is 2z squared. So by bringing down that term, 2z squared minus 2z squared is going to be 0. I did negative 2z squared. Remember this, once you get this answer, you have to multiply it times both terms. So negative 2z squared times negative 1 is a positive 2z squared. What negative 2? That one? Because z, um, z goes into negative 2z cubed negative 2z squared times. Okay. Think about it this way. Um, negative 2z cubed divided by z. Right? That's where I got the negative 2z squared. All right. So let's move to the next one. Does z go into 0? No. So we can't go to that one. So we just bring down the next term, which is negative 4z. Does z divide into negative 4z? Yep. Yes. How many times? Negative 4. You could do, since it didn't go into there, you could do negative x. Doesn't matter, though. If you just wanted a place value, you could do that. So then, therefore, x becomes minus 4. Then you've got to remember, we have to multiply this by both of these terms. So negative 4 times z is a negative 4z. And then negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. Put them in parentheses and subtract. Oh, z, yeah, you're right. So negative 4z minus a negative 4z is 0z. Goes to 0. Bring down the 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Therefore, you have no remainder. So my final answer is going to be z cubed minus 2z squared minus 4. Really, really important. Since it has, a remain since it has no remainder, we know that z minus 1 evenly divides into this polynomial. The next thing I want you guys to notice real quick, all right, um, guys, when you're multiplying them, or to make sure that your answer is the correct divisor, notice when I multiplied z cubed back, when I multiplied this number back times z, do you guys notice how these cancel out? And then when I multiplied negative 2z squared times z, do you notice how it made those two cancel out? And when I multiplied negative 4, when I multiplied negative 4 times z, do you notice how it made those two cancel out? So if you can always want to check your answer when doing long division, 
is you always check your answer is whatever you say, oh, this whatever this times this divides into it, when you multiply back out, you should always be getting a zero when it divides into it. Okay? Yes? We'll talk about that in the next problem. Okay?